All right, for the fourth time, <laughs> I'm not touching nothing. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I don't know what I touched, what I didn't touch, but we're trying this again for the fourth time at 8, 12 a.m. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It must be a good word. It must be a really good word. I can't seem to get it get it out. Good morning. Thank you again, Maria, my Doris, all the people that are tuning back in. I don't know what's going on. I don't know, but we, I'm not going to touch nothing. Amen. Please type. Let me see. Let me know that y'all can hear me and see me. I don't know if my... Okay, Essence. Good morning, Sister Sabrina. Okay, here it is. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Sister Dawn. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Type me a letter so I can see if, if this it's working. My comments are working. Amen. 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 Sorry for my for for the difficulty. Good morning, Liz. Yeah, good word must be coming. Good morning again, Marcia. I don't know why my comments. Mar Marcia, why why can't I see my comments? I don't know. It's not. I seem like it's not working. I can see him, but I think I have to touch the screen to see him. I don't want to have to do it. But anyway, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. All right, wait, let's pray. That might help. If I just start, start praying, I'm sure that will help. Yes, good morning, Ken. Good morning, Minister Claire. Good morning, Sister Dorothy Planner. You can hear me and see me. Thank you. Good morning, Luann. Good morning, Minister Steph. Yeah, you lost me again. I don't know my my um. I must have touched something. My my screen for my comments isn't working right. Good morning, brother Phil. Good morning, sister Shirley again. Good morning, brother Jerry. So I don't know. Good morning, Vane again. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm not gonna bother, but I will read all comments later if I don't read them now. Good morning. Let's go into this word while this is still working. Father, we just bless you this morning. We thank you for this day. We thank you that this is the day that you have made, and I come to rejoice and be glad to know, God. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for this first Sunday, June 7th, 2020. We ask that your strong hand would be upon our lives, Father God. We thank you for covering us and keeping us strong in you, Father God. We thank you that no weapon formed against us today shall prosper in Jesus' name. And we say, Lord, have your way as your word goes forth. Have your way today, Father God, in Jesus' matchless name. We thank you for everyone that is tuned in two and three and four times. We thank you for their, their patience, Father God. Bless them and cause them to be doers of your word and not just hearers in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So we, we thank God for everyone that's tuning in. Yes, Marcia, the devil is alive. Good morning, Suzanne. So we're going to go to Luke, the sixth chapter. I can't see my, well, I see my comments, but it's not rotating the way it usually does. So I will, if I don't shout you out, I will read your comments uh, after this broadcast is over. Uh, I will read all comments. I don't want to touch anything. But we're going to go to Luke, the sixth chapter. That's going to be where our word is coming from today. Luke, the sixth chapter. Luke, the sixth chapter. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you all for tuning in. Please share, share, share. Let's share this word this morning. It's, I believe it's a word from the Lord. I believe that's why we're having a little fight this morning. But that's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm made for the fight. I'm made for the fight in Jesus' name. So Luke, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 43. And the heading of my Bible says, the tree and its fruit. The tree and its fruit. It says, a good tree can produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can produce good fruit. A tree is identified by the kind of fruit it produces. Figs never grow on thorn bushes or grapes on bramble bushes. Listen to this, y'all. A good person produces good deeds from a good heart. And an evil person produces evil deeds from an evil heart. Whatever is in your heart determines what you say. I'm going to read that again. Uh, verse 45. I'm in Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 43 through 45. I'm going to read verse 45 again. It says, a good person produces good deeds from a good heart. And an evil person produces evil deeds from an evil heart. Whatever is in your heart, that's so good. Just think about that. Whatever is in your hearts, as you're listening to this word this morning, as you're here today, whatever is in your heart, good morning to everybody, whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Whatever is in your heart determines what you say. I'm going to read it one more time. That's one of our key verses for this morning. Luke 6, 45. A good person produces good deeds from a good heart. 
And an evil person produces evil deeds from an evil heart. Whatever is in your heart determines what you say. The King James translation says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Good morning to everybody. Amen. Uh, so what uh, my message for today is matters of the heart. Matters of the heart. But I made it personal. I want to say matters of my heart. Matters of my heart. And today's message was inspired by one of our ministers, Minister Stephanie Torrey, uh, by her weekly blog. And she has a weekly blog. I want to encourage all of you that, that are listening to me this morning to follow her. Her blog is called Speaking Truth in Love. So I want you to look it up and follow her. Uh, you'll be blessed. She sends out two uh, blogs a week. And you do see them on Facebook because most times I do share them. But uh, And her blog said this past week. Uh, so, no, I'm going to take it back. So as, as I was preparing my notes for the week... I knew where I, I felt like I knew what the Lord was saying for me to speak on. So as I was studying on Friday, I was studying on Friday uh, and preparing my notes. As I looked at my notes, my, my notes, didn't they just didn't, not, they didn't move me. They, they didn't really uh, speak to my spirit. So when I was looking at my notes, I was like, uh, I just didn't feel any, I guess, any oil on it or any anointing on it. So as I was preparing what I was uh, studying, so I put that to the side and I was like, okay, Lord, where do I go? What am I to speak on? So the Lord just impressed upon me. He said, look at uh, Steph's uh, blog again. Read her blog. So this is what her blog says. It says, just follow your heart, question mark. It says, false. The heart is deceitful above all things, period. Follow Jesus. I said, wow, that's good. I'm going to read it again. Uh, it was, a, and she had a picture with it. It was really nice. It says, just follow your heart, question mark. False. The heart is deceitful of, above all things. Follow Jesus. And as I read that, I was like, that's where it is. That's where it's at. I said, in the midst of all that's going on, it's all about matters of the heart. Somebody type in matters of the heart with the, uh, the things that we see going on in this nation, with what we see what happened to George Floyd on uh, last week or the week before last. And all the protesting and everything that's going on now that we see all over the TV, all over our cities, all over the states, all over the world, we see it. And I believe it's a good thing as long as it's done safely and it's done, it's done respectfully. You know, whatever people feel that they need to do in this season of their lives, I feel that you need to do it as long as it doesn't hurt anyone else. Amen. So uh, matters of my heart. So it's uh, race, we, we're dealing with racism and prejudice. It's called, it's matters of the heart. Amen. Uh, you can protest and march all around the world until you walk, until your feet are sore. If there's no heart change, there will be no permanent change. I'm going to say that again. You can protest and march. And I'm not against protesting. I'm not against marching as long as no one's getting hurt. As long as it's done in a respectful and a safe way. I have no problem with it. If that's what you feel you need to do or want to do that, I have no problem with it. And I understand it all. But you can protest and march all around the world. You can walk until your feet are sore. If there's no heart change, there will be no permanent change. It has to be a change from the heart. It has to be a change from the heart. You can't be, uh, you can't protest and march against prejudice. And then when you go home behind closed doors, you're saying things that you shouldn't say. Your, 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 your heart is speaking because it's in your heart because prejudice is in your heart and you can't call people out of their names. And this is not just for, uh, for my, for my Caucasian or any race. This is for everybody, even, even my brown and black uh, brothers and sisters. You have to make sure that you're not holding any prejudice or any grudges or anything in your own heart because of, what, because of things that have happened to you in your life. Amen. So we want to make sure that while all this is going on around the world and we see that it has worldwide notification and it has worldwide publicity, that we want to make sure that we have our hearts right and pure, that we have no prejudice no racism, no ill will in our hearts, no matter what race you are. Amen? No matter what race you are. Glory to God. And it's not about special treatment. It's about equal treatment. Amen? Hallelujah. So, um, and it's not just about action. It's about change from the heart. So I want to give you about 12 types of hearts we want to have. 
12 types of hearts we want to have, and we want this change to begin with us as, as believers. We're Christians. We should be paving the way as believers, amen? And we should we have to set an example. Even in our churches, we can, we can have, and there is prejudice, even in our churches. And we want to make sure that we're not singing and praising God together, and then we're going home and we're racist or we're prejudiced, because that ought not to be. So as, as I'm challenging you this morning, I want to make sure that as we talk about matters of the heart, that you make sure that your heart is clean and right before the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. So number one, 12 types of hearts we want to have. And you're probably going to hear me talk about it for the next couple of weeks. Because when you deal when you deal with the heart, it's not just a one-time thing. Because we need to deal with our heart issues every day. It's things of the heart every day. Amen. All right. Here we go. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Glory to God. The devil is a liar. We're on here today and we're going forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So matters of the heart, matters of my heart. I'm dealing with your heart today. As I as I as I studied this message, it, it caused me to look at my own heart. I don't just do messages just to just to have a good series or to have a good teaching, but I examine my heart. I examine my life. And those of you that know, I um I am uh, I was adopted. And I just found out uh, this year, if the paperwork is right, that my mother is, my biological mother is Caucasian. So I am biracial, even though to see me, I am an African-American man. So all this going on in the world, it affects me too. But I am a person, I don't have any prejudice. I love all of God's people. I love them white, brown, and black. So the way God has, has shaped me and molded me, he just put a heart, he gave me a heart and a love for people that I am able to cra cross over all racial barriers, and I love all people uh, from the bottom of my heart. So, okay, enough about me, and let's get to this word. This is your challenging word for you. Ready? Minister Steph says she's ready. Okay, number one, 12, heart, 12 hearts we want to have, 12 types of hearts we want to have. Number one, we want to have a clean heart, a clean heart. Number one, you want to have clean hearts. And Psalm 51 and 10 says, uh, from the King James Version, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me o a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Number one, when we're talking about a clean heart, David said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit. The only one that can create a clean heart in you is God. Hallelujah. Not a protest, not a march, not a banner, not wearing red, black, and green, none of that. Only person that can create a clean heart is God. And if your heart has issues, your heart, ha your heart has prejudice, your heart has uh, uh, maybe private prejudice or inner prejudice, you need to get before the Lord and say, Lord, clean my heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And it says, and renew a right spirit within me. If David said renew a right spirit within me, that goes to tell you that there can be a wrong spirit in us. Amen? So David said, create in me, Psalm 51 and 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And as born-again believers, that should be our daily prayer. Not just because all this is going on, not just because we're protesting, not just because we're in this rah-rah and in this hype. What's going to happen when the hype is over? What's going to happen when people stop protesting? Are you still going to go back home, go back to church, go back to work, and still be racist, still be prejudiced, and still do the wrong thing? And when I talk about racism and prejudice, I'm talking about everybody. I ain't just talking, I'm not targeting no one race. I'm talking about everybody. Because everybody has the power and, and, and can be, if they will to be, prejudice. It's not about a skin color. It's a sin. And we want that sin of prejudice to be erased in Jesus' name. And we have to start from the church. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So number one, the first type of heart we want to have is a clean heart. Number two, we want to have a pure heart. A pure heart. Uh, Psalm 24, 3 and 4 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. We want to be people that have pure hearts. Lord, take away any impurities from my heart. Take away any racism from my heart. Take any ism and schism out of my heart. And let me tell you something. Sometimes you may want to justify prejudice because maybe somebody of another race did you wrong. I get that. I get it. But you got to ask God to take that out of your heart. You have to ask God to take it out of your heart. Amen. Glory to God. So number number two, we want to have a pure heart. 
Uh, Psalm 51 and 10 also from the English Standard Version says, God, create a pure heart in me and renew a right attitude within me. We need an attitude adjustment. We need our attitudes shifted. We need our attitudes changed. Amen. And, and, and it's not so much about the protests and marching, although that's fine in its place. You want to make sure that, that your heart is right. That you're marching or whatever you're doing with a pure heart and with right motives. Because like I said, when all this all this rah-rah is over and all this public publicity is over and all the news is over, you want to make sure that you have a clean hands and a pure heart. Amen? Matthew 5 and 8 from the NIV says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Matthew 5 and 8 from the Contemporary English Version says, God blesses those people whose hearts are pure. There's a blessing upon you when your hearts are pure. They will see him. And I put, I put they will see him in every situation throughout all eternity. We'll see him now, but we'll be with the Lord throughout all eternity. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Glory to God. And James 4 eight from the New, New Living Translation says, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Listen to that. Listen to this. James 4 and 8. Glory to God. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. We can't have God's perspective and the world's perspective. No, you got to have God's perspective. Uh, the world will tell you a lot of things. You should be this. You should be that. You should, let's pay back. Let's do vengeance. No, we don't do evil for evil. Amen. We don't do evil for evil. For what you sow, that's what you're going to reap. So number two, you want to keep a pure heart. And the only one that can purify your heart is God. Amen. Number three, y'all enjoying this? Give God a praise. Y'all enjoying this? Number three, you need God's word in your heart. You need God's word in your heart. You, I, we need God's word in our hearts. Psalm 119.11 from the Contemporary English Version says, I treasure your word above all else. Do you, do you treasure God's word? Or are you just a Sunday believer? Do you treasure God's word? Or do you just uh, open the word of God when it's church time? Psalm 119.11 from the Contemporary English Version says, I treasure your word above all else. It keeps me from sinning against you. The King James Version says, David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And when I read this scripture, it challenged me. Listen to this. Psalm 119.11 from the Contemporary English Version says, I treasure your word above all else. That's a challenge for you today. Do you treasure God's word above all else? Do you treasure God's news above what's going on in society? Do you treasure God's word uh, over other people's opinions? Do you treasure God's word above your opinion? Listen to this. I treasure your word above all else. It keeps me from sinning against you. And that should be something too. As believers, we want to make sure that we're not sinning against the Lord. And I know that we love God, but we want to work on the areas where we may be sinning against God. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So number three, we need God's word in our heart. I have another scripture to challenge you. God's word in our heart, uh, still on number three, Hebrews 4.12. From the English Standard Version says, for the word, listen to this, for the word of God is living and active. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning, I love this, and discerning, listen to this, the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's good. That's what it does. Read it again. The Word of God. What does the Word of God do according to Hebrews 4.12? It says, for the Word of God is living. But God's Word is not dead. God's Word is living and active. It's not. A, we don't serve an inactive God. We don't sit, serve have an inactive Word. God's Word is active. It says, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts, the innermost thoughts, and intentions and desires of the heart. So God knows, uh, he knows the intentions of your heart. You can make your mouth say one thing, but your heart says something else. I'm going to read another, another scripture uh, that, that uh, the Lord said in Matthew 15, 8. It says, this people draweth nigh or closer to me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Their heart is far from me. Amen. 
So we want to make sure we keep God's word in our heart. Amen. Number four. Number four, the fourth type of heart we want to have is a guarded heart. We want to have a guarded heart. It says, uh, Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart above all else. For it determines the course of your life. That is so good. Proverbs 4.23 from the New Living Translation says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the cause of your life. Listen to this from the Good, from the good News Translation, Proverbs 4.23. Listen to this. This is so good. And this really convicted me when I heard this. Listen to this. Uh, Proverbs 4.23 from the Good News Translation says, Be careful how you think. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. That is so good. I'm going to read that again. Uh, Proverbs 4.23 from the Good News Translation says, Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. That means if you think negative, you won't do anything. If you think poverty, you'll stay poor. If you think sick, you'll stay sick. If you have stinking thinking, you'll continue to have stinking thinking. So your life will be shaped by how you think. If you think you know God loves me and God has a plan for my life, you'll work towards that plan. You'll walk, you'll you'll serve him out of a out of a relationship of love. Amen. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. What do you think? When you're by yourself, what do you think about yourself? What is your 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 your, your esteem? One, uh, one of my leaders last night, she talked about identity. What is your identity? How do you see yourself? Not how others see you. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself prosperous? Do you see yourself blessed? Do you see yourself that God can use you? Or do you see yourself with low self-esteem, low self-worth, talking negative about yourself, talking negative about your situation? Read it again. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. That is so true. If you if you think you can't, you won't. If you say you can't, you won't. You need to say, I can do all things through Christ who empowers me or gives me strength. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. All right, number five. The fifth type of heart we want to have is a transformed heart. You want a transformed heart. A transformed heart. Romans 12, 2 says... Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person. How does he transform you into a new person, Pastor Mark? By changing the way you think. By changing the way you think. There's a lot of people that love the Lord, that have been serving the Lord for a long time, but your mouth goes against God's words. You speak negativity. You speak fear. You speak doubt. You speak unbelief. If ever you want to know how a person thinks, listen by what comes. Listen to what comes out of their mouth. If gossip is in you, gossip is going to come out of you. If prejudice is in you, prejudice is going to come out of you. If, if racism is in you, racism is going to come out of you. If, if positivity is in you, positivity is going to come out of you. If love is in you, love is going to come out of you. If love is in your heart, love is going to come out your mouth. Amen? A transformed heart. Romans 12.2 don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. We as believers, we don't do things the way the world does it. We live at a higher level and we do things in a different way. Amen? So don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. Don't copy the behavior and customs of society. But let God transform you into a new person. How do I become a new person? By changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and perfect and pleasing. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, the New Living Translation says uh, in Philippians 4, 7, then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything uh, anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen? So we, we, we want to change the way we think. Amen? All right, number five was a transform. Number six is give God your heart. Give God your heart. Give God your heart. Number six is give God your heart. Um, and the scripture reference is Proverbs 23, 26. Give me your heart and let your eyes delight in my ways. That is in Proverbs 23, 26. Give me your heart. God is saying give me your heart. 
even no matter how your heart is, even if your heart is low, give God your heart. Give me your heart and let your eyes delight in my ways. So number six, give God your heart. Number seven, we want to have a blameless heart, a blameless heart, a blameless heart, a blameless heart. Psalm 119 and 1 says, blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all the heart. I love that. I'm going to read it again. Psalm 119 and 1. It says, Blessed are those whose ways are blameless. We want our ways to be blameless. Who walk according to the laws of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all the heart. Their heart. You can't have blameless ways if you don't have a blameless heart. You cannot have blameless ways if you do not have a blameless heart. So number seven, we want to have a blameless heart. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Amen. So number seven is a blameless heart. Amen. Glory to God. Number eight, we want to have an humble heart, an humble heart, a humble heart. Psalm 34, 18 says, uh, from the God's Word translation, The Lord is near to those whose hearts are humble. He saves those whose spirits are crushed. Glory to God. That's Psalm 34, 18 from the Passion Translation. It says, The Lord is near. No, that, I'm sorry, that was the God's Word translation. It says, The Lord is near to those whose hearts are humble. He saves those whose spirits are crushed. Amen? So number eight is a, is a humble heart. Number nine is a restored heart. Same verse, but from the Passion Translation. Number nine, a restored heart. The Lord is close to all whose hearts are crushed by pain, and he is always ready to restore the repentant one. You may have had a crushed heart where maybe pain has come against you. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you're in a situation, no matter what it is, the Lord wants to restore your heart, Father God. So I thank you, Lord, for restoring hearts and lives this morning in Jesus' name. Number nine is a restored heart. The Lord is close to all those whose hearts are crushed by pain, and he is always ready. Say, he's always ready to restore the repentant one. And and, and that's what it is. We got to repent. We have to repent for, from our ways. We have to repent from how we've treated people. We have to repent from prejudice. We have to repent from racism. And this is everybody. I'm not just talking to one race. Everybody. We have to repent. And, and, and if you say, well, Pastor Mark, I'm not prejudiced. My heart is right, so keep it right. Don't let, up, don't let anything get in your heart and corrupt your heart. Keep a pure motive and pure ways for the Lord and for his people. Amen? So we want, we got to always repent. We always got to say, Lord, wash me, cleanse me, purify me. Cleanse my heart, O oh God. Amen? Number 10, the 10th type of heart we want to have is a pleasing heart. A pleasing heart. A pleasing heart. We want to have hearts that are pleasing to the Lord, a pleasing heart. Psalm 119 and 14 says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing or acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. A pleasing heart. Psalm, Psalm 19 and 14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. That was Psalm 1914 from the New Living Translation. Amen? I love that. That's a prayer too. May the words of my mouth and, and the meditations of my heart be acceptable or be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock, my Redeemer. Amen? Number 11, we want to have a firm heart, a firm heart, a firm heart. Psalm 112 and 7, a firm heart. Amen. A firm heart. Psalm 112 and 7 says, from the English Standard Version, He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is fixed. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. I'm going to read it again. Psalm 119 and 7 from the English Standard Version says, He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. And another word for firm is steadfast, confident, fixed, and strong. And when we hear bad news and when we see things that are going on in the news, we want to have firm hearts. We don't want to crumble. We want to be strong. We want to be firm. We want to be steadfast. We want to be confident. We want to be strong because we trust in the Lord. You can't trust in our you can't trust in yourself. You have to trust in the Lord. So we want to have firm hearts. Somebody type in firm hearts, firm hearts, firm hearts. Amen. Psalm one twelve seven. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is fixed or firm, 
trusting in the Lord. So we want to have a firm heart, and a firm heart is a steadfast heart, a confident heart, a fixed heart, and a strong heart. Amen? Number 12, which is our last one, number 12, which is our last one, is uh, for this is we want to always examine our hearts. We want to always examine our hearts. And don't let me forget, because I forgot last night. This is our communion Sunday. So before I take prayer requests, when I finish, I will, um, we will have communion, and then I'm going to take prayer requests. Amen? Because I got so excited last night. We had a phenomenal night on the prayer line. I forgot to do communion. So we will do communion this morning. Amen? So number 12, always examine your heart. You have to examine your heart. Examine your heart against the word of God. Examine your heart. Examine your motive. So number 12, always examine your heart. Psalm 26 and 2 says, Put me on trial, Lord, all cro and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart. That is so good. That's Psalm 26 and 2 from the New Living Translation. It says, Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Come on, we want to ask God to cross-examine us. Some of us wouldn't probably stand a test right now if you say, oh, I'm not prejudiced, I'm not racist, I'm not this. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to cross-examine you. What would God find out if he cross-examined you? What would really be in your heart? What would really be your motive if the Lord cross-examined you? Psalm 26 and 2, put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart. Another scripture is, is Proverbs 21 and 2. People may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their heart. That is so good. People may be right in their own eyes. You may think, well, I have a right to do this. I have a right to harm this person. I have a right to, I have a right to give them injustice. No, you don't. People may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their heart. So you may think you're right in your own eyes, but the Lord says, uh -uh, that, that is wrong. There's two left shoes. Amen. And Proverbs 21, 2 says, we may think we are doing the right thing, but the Lord always knows what's in our hearts. That is so good right there. Proverbs 21, 2 from the Contemporary English Version says, we may think, 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 just because you think something doesn't mean you're right. We may think we are doing the right thing, but the Lord always knows what is right in our hearts. And Proverbs 21, 2 from the Good News Translation says, you may think that everything you do is right, but remember that the Lord judges your motives. He judges our motives. He judges why we do what we do. He judges why we do what we do. Amen. It's a lot of scripture, but we need the word of God. We need you don't need to hear my opinion. You don't need to hear what's on the news. You can if you want to see what's on the news, you turn the news on. When you come to church, when you come to hear the word of the Lord, you need to hear God's word. So God's word can clean us. So God's word can sanctify us. So God's word can get out any hidden agenda or any hidden motives of the heart. Amen. Okay, I want to give you four hearts you don't want to have. Four hearts you don't want to have. Four hearts you do not want to have. Amen. Number one is a deceitful heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So number one, you do not want to have a deceitful heart. Number two, you don't want to have a stony heart. You don't want to have, number two, a stony heart. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take, a, I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart, a pliable heart, a tender heart, a compassionate heart, an obedient heart, one that's sensitive to me, one that's sensitive to God, a open heart. Amen. I'm going to read that again. Number two is a stony heart. You do not want to have a stony heart. A hard heart. You do not want to have a stony heart. What uh, um, Ezekiel 36, 26 from the New Living Translation says, And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart, a pliable heart, a tender heart, a compassionate heart. These are my synonyms I'm giving you. An obedient heart, one that's sensitive to me, that's sensitive to God. You want a heart that is sensitive to God. 
You want a heart that is sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You want a heart that is sensitive to the voice of God, that when God leads you and tells you to do something, that you do it. When God tells you to forgive someone, that you forgive them. When God tells you to let it go, that you let it go. When God tells you just to walk in peace and forgiveness, that you walk in it. you got to have a, a, a pure heart and a sensitive heart to hear the voice of God. Amen. Glory to God. When I think about this, I think about our born-again experience. Our salvation is based on St. John 3.16. St. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I love verse 17. It says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The only way that you can allow God to deal with your heart and that you can have the type of hearts that I was telling you about, the 12 types, you have to give God your heart and you got to give the Lord your life. It's not about going to a building. It's not about having a, having a be in a denomination, you want to be hooked up to the Lord. You want to not be close to the pastor. You want to be close to the master. You want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ needs to be Lord of your life. I don't care how many good things you do. I don't care how nice you can be. You need to be saved. The word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, Father, we release salvation and deliverance and wholeness all across this nation in Jesus' name. Cause this world to receive you as Lord and Savior of their lives. And as they do that, that all prejudice would be eradicated. All racism would be eradicated because they would keep you as front and center of their life. That you would be Lord in their lives. There can be no change without making Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. Glory to God. Amen. So when I think about... Uh, I think of, when I think about this, I think about our born again experience, our salvation. Uh, Romans ten nine says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, that thou shalt be saved. Second Corinthians five seventeen says therefore if any man be in Christ, not in church, in Christ, therefore not in a denomination, in Christ, not in not in a movement, but in Christ. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. We gotta let. We have to truly let the old things pass away. The old racism pass away. The old prejudice pass away. Our old negative mindset uh, pass away. Maybe the things that our mothers and fathers taught us or shaped us in the house behind closed doors that were racially wrong, that were prejudiced. We gotta let that stuff go in Jesus' name because we're new creatures. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You're a new species. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You gotta let stuff go. Let racism go. Let prejudice go. Let keeping stuff in your heart, let it go in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, it says, uh, also, it says, a new life has begun. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has come. So we want to allow God to take away our stony heart and give us a heart of flesh, a soft heart, a repentant heart, a pliable heart. The second type of heart we don't want to have is a stony heart. Number three, we don't want to have a hardened heart. No hardened hearts. You do not want to have a hardened heart. Uh... Mark 6.52 from the King James Version says, And they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for the heart, their hearts were hardened. Amen. That's Jesus when he was doing miracles. It says, And they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for the heart, their heart was hardened. You don't want to have a hardened heart. No. I know things have been done to everybody against every, maybe somebody from another race has done something to you or treated you wrong. It could be a white against a black, a black against white, Hispanic against any. It could be anybody. I'm not singling out anybody. But you want to make sure that you don't have a hardened heart. You want to make sure that you release any grudges, any unforgiveness, and say, Lord, fill me with your love. Show me how to deal with every race. Help me to release what has happened to me. Maybe maybe a black man did something to you. Maybe a Caucasian man, a Spanish man, and, and you have developed a, a, a hatred or a prejudice against that race. Don't do that. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. In Jesus' name, don't have a hardened heart. Because let me tell you something, when you hold unforgiveness, that person, that race, whatever it is, it holds power over you in Jesus' name. All right, the fourth type of heart we don't want to have is a troubled heart. John 14, 27 says, Peace, I leave with you. 
peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You do not want to have a troubled heart. But if your heart is troubled, you can go to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he will set you free in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I like 1 Samuel 16 and 7. 7b says, For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Amen. You can look good on the outside. You can say the right political thing. You can say the right spiritual thing. You can be in church, different races, different mixture, and say, oh, I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And then go home and stab another race in their back. That's not God's will. You want to make sure that your heart and your motives are right in Jesus' name. Closing scripture for today. I have a closing scripture. But you may hear some more of this about next week. Because we need to deal with matters of our heart. Matters of my heart. And when I teach this word to you today, you need to go before the Lord and ask him. Don't just take it as another sermon. Don't just say, oh, Pastor Mark, you taught a good message. No. Where did this word find you? What do you have in your heart? What are you holding in your heart that you have not given to the Lord? You need to let it go. Closing scripture. Then I'm going to do prayer. Then I'm going to... Uh, do communion. I'm going to take prayer requests. Amen. So num our, our closing scripture is from Matthew 27. I'm sorry. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39. And this is a very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. You're going to love it. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39. Listen to, what, listen to what Jesus said. I love what Jesus says. He said, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I'm going to read that again. Matthew 22, verses 37 to 39. As I wrap this message up today, matters of, of the heart, matters of my heart. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy I'm sorry thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself and thy neighbor does not mean somebody who lives to the left or the right of you at your, at your house your neighbor is that person that you work with your neighbor is humanity. Your neighbor is those you rub shoulders with. He wants us to be able to love people from every race, every creed, every nation, those that we agree with, those that we don't agree with. But how can we love people? you got to first love God. Jesus said unto, them, unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And let me let me put a little sidebar here. How do you know if you love the Lord? How, how can you love the Lord like this with all that that's within you? Those of you that are grandparents, those of you that have children, I say more so grandchildren because parent, parents, uh, they kind of, they love grandchildren. They love their kids. Even when, even when my mother was living, she, uh, my, uh, she, my nephew, which was her first grandson, she, oh my God, she just loved him so much. Love. I said, wait, did you forget we were here first? Amen. But there's a love that grandparents have for grandkids that's just like indescribable. And that's the same way we should love the Lord or, or we love our favorite food or we love our husband. We love our wife. We love our boo. We would do anything for them. We need to have that much love for the things of God and for the Lord. Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as you love yourself. I love myself. There was a time I didn't love myself, but I thank God for healing and I thank God for breakthrough that I do love myself, but I, I, I thank God that I can, I, that I want to love people, love humanity, love his, his people. Even though you might not like people sometimes, you, he wants us to love them. I want to love God and love and bless his people. And I pray that that's your prayer today too. Okay. Amen. So I'm going to recap what I went over, and then I'm going to take communion, and I'm going to take some prayer requests. I'm going to stay on a little longer uh, since we were uh, had technical difficulties. Okay, the 12 types of hearts we want to have. 
For those that are taking notes, the 12 types of hearts we want to have. Number one is a clean heart, Psalm 51 and 10. Number two, a pure heart, Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4, Matthew 5 and 8, and James 4 and 8. Number three, God's word in your heart. Scripture references Psalm 119, verse 11, and Hebrews 4, 12. Number four, a guarded heart. Proverbs 4.23. Number five, a transformed heart. Romans 12 and 2. Uh, also for number four, two, I'm sorry, number four also was uh, Philippians 4 and 7. A guarded heart was uh, for Proverbs 4.23 and Philippians 4.7. Number five, a transformed heart. Romans 12 and 2. Number six, give God your heart. Proverbs 23.26. Number seven, a blameless heart, Psalm 119 and 1. Number eight, a humble heart, Psalm 34, 18. A restored heart, Psalm 34, 18 from the Passion Translation. A pleasing heart, Psalm 1914. A firm heart, Psalm 112 and 7. Number 12, examine your heart. We need to examine our hearts daily, even as we take communion. The word says, let a man examine himself. Amen. So number 12, we want to examine our hearts. Psalm 26 and 2, Proverbs 21, 2, and that's it. I read it from a few translations. Three types of heart, we, th four types of hearts we don't want to have. Number one, we don't want to have a deceitful heart, Jeremiah 17 and 9. Number two, a stony heart, Ezekiel 36, 26. A hardened heart, Mark 6, 52. And a troubled heart, John 14, 27. Amen. And our closing scripture was Matthew 27, 37 through 39. Matters of the heart, matters of my heart. As we prepare for communion, I'm going to pray that God will bless these elements and that we will take our communion. If you're here today, uh, you can um, get your communion ready as I pray. Father, we thank you for this word today. We thank you, Lord. That we want hearts that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, David said, create in me, O God, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. So, Lord, as we go into this time of communion, we ask that you would forgive us. Lord, forgive us. We repent right now of everything that we have thought, said, done, any negative or false mindsets that we've had, any wrong attitudes we've had. We give it to you, Lord. We ask that you would forgive us, that you would wash us, that you would cleanse us, that you would purify us in your blood today, Lord. In Jesus' name. And Father, as we come today, as we bring these elements to you, as we take our communion this day, Father God, this first Sunday, we ask you, Lord, to, that you would prepare our, our hearts to take communion, Lord. Your word says to let a man examine himself. And Lord, we examine ourselves right now. And we ask you to forgive us, Lord, of everything that we have thought, said, done, and spoken against your will and against your word. We thank you for washing us in your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, as we bless our elements today, we ask that you would bless this bread, which is symbolic of your body. Bless this uh, grape juice, which is symbolic of your blood. And we're able to take them in Jesus' name. Amen. So whether you have bread, cracker, bread, wafer, whatever you have, we're going to lift up our elements to the Lord. And Father, we thank you for this time of communion. We thank you for your body, which was broken for us, Lord. And we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for watching over us and keeping us, Lord. And Father God, as we partake of your body, if anything is wrong in our bodies, our physical bodies, or in our, our, our soulless realm, our minds, our wills, and our emotions, I pray that as we take of this communion today, that you would bring supernatural healing and restoration to our bodies and to our souls. I release miracles of healing to flow in every sick person's body today. In Jesus' name, and I say by the stripes of Jesus Christ, that you're healed and whole. In Jesus' name, let's take of his body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Fathers, we lift up this grape juice, which is symbolic of your blood. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross. Lord, that we may be forgiven. Lord, that you took every sin to the cross. Racism, prejudice, injustice, you took it all to the cross. Every sin, every weakness, you took it all to the cross. So we thank you this morning for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us and washes us in Jesus' name. Purify us in your blood, wash us and sanctify us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink of the blood this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Well, it's 9 o'clock, y'all. I'm going to stand for a few more minutes. Uh, at 9 o'clock, we're going to, uh, those, our leaders are going to shift over to the prayer line that starts at 9 o'clock. Minister Steph will release a word this morning. But at this time, I want to take any prayer requests. If you have any names of people that want prayer, I'm going to, I'm going to take some names as you type them in now in Jesus' name. I'm going to take names and pray for them now, and then I'm going to uh, close out. So if you have any prayer requests, take them now in Jesus' name. Any names you want prayer for, I'm going to call those names out to the Lord as we're in prayer in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Good morning to everybody. Thank everybody for tuning in. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Thank you all. Amen. I'm glad everybody. Father, we pray for Carol this morning. We ask that you continue to cover her, keep her, and strengthen her in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for Myra's salvation today, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you save her, deliver her, and set her free. Father, we release supernatural healing to Bubba Rashim Sumter this morning. Father, we release your wonders of healing to consume his body. We thank you that no weapon formed against Bubba's body shall prosper in Jesus' name. And I release miracles of healing. I thank you that he's getting better and better as we speak, stronger and stronger this day in Jesus' name. And I release miracles of healing to Bubba's body in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, lift up my sister Lisa Waters and her family, Lisa Waiters and her families this morning in Jesus' name. And I pray that you cover her, that you keep her. I thank you for everything that you've placed inside of my sister, this woman of God. And I say, Lord, have your way in her life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Use her for your glory. Let this be an awesome month of change and turn around for this woman of God in Jesus' name, for her and her family in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for... Uh, Lou Ann, Father God, we thank you for bringing healing and wholeness to these issues, Father God, to this health issue, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you were wounded in, for her transgressions, that you were bruised for her iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes, I thank you that Lou Ann is healed and whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, for blessing her and for all that she sows into this ministry. Thank you for her beautiful letter that she sent to the ministry on last week. Bless her in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Michael and Joseph, and we pray that you cover Michael, that you cover Joseph. Father God, we really supernatural breakthrough and change in their lives. Lord, we thank you for drawing them to you by your Holy Spirit. Bless Maria's entire family, her husband and her sons, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for healing for... Uh, the person Sister Veronica wrote down, I don't want to mess up anybody's name, M Michiko, Michiko. Father, we thank you for healing for Michiko this morning, right now, in Jesus' name. We release your wonders over their body, Lord, in Jesus' name. We release supernatural healing to them this morning. To this person that Sister Veronica Brown has placed in here, I don't want to mess up their name, but Lord, you know them, and I release miracles of healing to their body, in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Sister Dawn's grandmother, Gertrude. We speak healing and wholeness. Over Miss Gertrude's body, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you that she gets better and better and stronger and stronger each day. In Jesus' name, I speak peace to her mind and to healing to her body. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray for uh, the, the O'Neill family. I don't want to mess up the names. V-A-L-L-I-N-A-H. Lord, you know them. We pray, Father God, that you bless them, that you keep them, that you cover them. In Jesus' name. Bless this family, Father God. Cover them, whatever is needed. We call every need met in their life. In Jesus' name. We thank you for salvation for uh, Luann's children and their husbands and boyfriends, Father God. Bless, save, deliver, and set free for everyone. In Jesus' name. For Luann's children. And their husbands and boyfriends, Father God, we release salvation and wholeness to them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Father, we look. We pray for uh, Sister Dorothy's friend, Father God. We ask that you cover her, them, keep them, and strengthen them, Father God. That you bless them, and whatever the need is today, that you meet and exceed every need in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up uh, Helena's brother, Carmen. Father God, we ask that you cover him and keep him and strengthen him today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Lin Lydia Santiago, Father God, that you cover her, keep her, and strengthen her today in Jesus' name. God bless you, Laverne. Father, we thank you for covering Mom Ruthie today, Father God. We release your wonders of healing and strength to her physical body, Lord. And we thank you for leading her and guiding her by your Holy Spirit. Lord, open doors for Ma today that no one can close. We thank you for your strong hand being upon Ma Ruthie's life, Father God. Bless her, keep her, and strengthen her. Bless her family, bless her sons, bless her grandchildren. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we lift up Jerry and Mary. 
uh, and for healing and peace for them. Father, we ask that you cover Jerry, that you cover Mary. We release healing and peace in their lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for healing Sonia's mother today, Father God, that you touch her body, that you bring strength and healing to her this morning. In the matchless name of Jesus, touch her mother and her father, her brother, her family, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for all the homeless people that are out today, Father God, that you would cover them, that you would provide for them, that you would make ways for them, Lord, in, Jesus, in every state, every country, Father God, that you cover the homeless and keep them protected, Lord, and let them not be homeless long, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for Hakeem, we pray for Kai, we pray for Abdul, that you have your way in their lives, Father God. We thank you for these mighty men of valor, Father God, and we thank you for covering them, keeping them, whatever they need. We thank you for meeting and exceeding every need in their life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're still praying and calling out names. Father, we pray for David Jackson, Father God, that you cover him, that you keep him, Father God, whatever he needs today, Lord. We pray that you send deliverance, that you send breakthrough and change for David Jackson in Jesus' name. For Joyce Jackson, Father God, in Jesus' name, have your way in her life, Father God. Bless David Jackson and Joyce Jackson in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, thank you for... Uh, the Hampton young men, Father God, all of Sister Juanita's sons, Lord, cover them, keep them, and strengthen them. We thank you for your strong hand being upon their life. We thank you that no weapon formed against these young men shall prosper in Jesus' name. Bless Juanita, bless Juanita, bless her business, bless her sons, bless her husband, bless her family near and far in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we lift up... Uh, we thank you for Ro Melanie and Rosalind Red, Father God. Bless their family today, Father God. Cover them, keep them, strengthen them, Lord, in Jesus' name. You're welcome, Sister Dawn. Father, we pray for um, uh, Minister Ruth's nieces and nephews, Father God. Draw them to you by your Holy Spirit. Have your way in their life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Cause them to make you Lord over their lives, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord. I pray for my dear sister Sharon, Father God, as she has an appointment for the cardiologist this week. Father, we thank you, Lord. She lifts her hands. Father, we come in agreement. I send an agreement, Father God, because there's no distance in prayer. And Father God, I thank you that as Sharon Brown goes to the doctor this week, that she will get a good report. We thank you, Lord. Whose report will we believe? We believe the report of the Lord. So I release your wonders of healing and breakthrough for Sharon Brown today. In Jesus' name, on this the seventh day, Lord, we seal it on this the seventh day that it will be complete, Lord. That this is a day of completion, and we complete it even before she goes, Father God. Total and complete healing and wholeness, and that every report is a good report. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we pray for the Williams family, Lord, that you cover them, that you keep them, that you strengthen them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Save, heal, and deliverance, Jesus' name. You're welcome, uh, Helena. You're welcome. Father, we pray for allergies to be healed this morning. And just put your hands on your, on your face, Helena. Father, we release healing for her allergies and her nose, Father God. We, bring, we release healing for these allergies, Father God. We thank you for healing her body from the crown of her head to the very soles of her feet. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, whatever she needs to take, whatever she needs to do, Father, as she takes it, Father God, we release supernatural healing to infuse Helena's body in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Celise uh, Martin, Father God, that you bless Celise Martin in Jesus' name. Uh, forgive me if I'm saying the names wrong. Father, we pray for finances, Father God, for all those that are struggling financially, Father God, that you make a way for those that need jobs, those that are not working, Father God. We release your increase and your prosperity, Lord, all across this nation, Lord. You said, if, as men give, it shall be given unto them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And, Father God, those that uh, need provision for jobs or for food, make a way for them, Lord. Cause them to know, Lord, that you are their provider. In Jesus' name, amen. You're welcome, Veronica. Father, we thank you for Vane, for covering Vane and keeping her and strengthening her in Jesus' name. Thank you for uh, Vane having another birthday, Lord, and we just bless her. We thank you for her faithfulness to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for Kenny this morning in Jesus' name. Touch Kenny, strengthen him, let your will be done in Kenny's life in Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome, Sister Sharon. I'm believing for a good report, and I stand in agreement with you in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Well, I'm getting ready to go. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to go. So we ask right now that you would have your way, Lord, in your people's life. We thank you for this word today, Father God. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, and your grace, and your grace, Lord. Bless everyone that's watching. Father God, bless their lives. 
bless their children, bless their sons, their husbands, their nieces, their nephews. Bless them today, Father God. Give them a phenomenal day, Father God, and cause us all to examine our hearts, the matters of my heart, in Jesus' name. I love you all. If you need me, you know how to inbox me, text me, call me, write me, whatever you need to. I'm here for you if you need me. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Amen. You're welcome, Lisa. You're, uh, God bless you, Melanie. Yes, yes, yes. Bless you, Sister Audrey. Love you all. Have a phenomenal day. I'll see you next week. Matters of the heart. God bless.